Hello, everybody. Welcome to 2022. Hope everybody had a good holiday and is looking forward to the year ahead. As you know, Sue and myself have started the series on well-being and the essentials of well-being. So today, what we thought we would talk about is to stop worrying and to start living. What do you think? Mm. Easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. That's why I thought if we could just share like a few tips, just to just remind ourselves of these things. Um, as you say, it's not easy. It's not easy. And I think the, the, the first point of this is to, to reach out. And again, that's also not easy to be vulnerable and to reach out to community or friends or whomever and just go, hey, sure, things are a bit tough at the moment. Does that, where are you on the reaching out scale? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think I th I've been saying to my kids since they were tiny, tiny, you know, your feelings have to be on the outside, not on the inside. Because when they're on the inside, they tend to get big and they echo and they, you know, they amplify. Um, so it is, yeah, it's certainly my saving grace. You know, I love um, running with friends and just, you know, free flow conversation, whatever comes, comes um and that yeah that's just an incredibly important space hard to heart what about you bridget how does it work for you yeah well i i i tie in speaking to people tied in with honesty i mean to the point of probably probably too honest you know somebody says to me how are you doing and i'm not great like i'll mm. absolutely you know i'm not going to give you my dirty laundry more than what's needed but i will definitely go yo you know it's tough at the moment with, with whatever's going on you know, I'm definitely never going to go, I'm rocking it. It's amazing if yeah. that's not true. So I think the reaching out and being very honest is important. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I think that's, that's incredibly important. And I think also just to be aware of the, the narratives that are coming out for you, because even as you're speaking them, you know, you can, you can listen in a way and just, I think it just gives you such perspective on what's really going on inside the brain. You know, what channels of thought patterns are we, you know, repeating? Um, certainly patterns are, are worth picking up. Um, and yeah, sometimes, you know, once it's spoken, it's, it, it just gives you perspective, doesn't it? Um, perspective and also a reminder of what's in your control and what's not in your control and again I think that sounds so easy but certain things are not in our control and and there there isn't anything that we can do and possibly by speaking to somebody and being very honest we can actually get a clear understanding of actually whatever that is is not within our control yeah yeah I mean I love the, the there's possibly two things I love about coaching, you know, first the listening, obviously, but then also the process that you go through um, in working with someone just to break, break it down, you know, and then to figure out, okay, well, what's the tiniest first step, mm. you know, within your control. So within that domain, what's the first little thing you want to do? And, you know, how can you get support for that? So you just start, you start that momentum, you know, instead of, instead of being, being stuck in that very, emotional and quite um, anxious uh, place, you can just start to move forward a little bit. And with that first step, what is your intention? And intention is absolutely the foundation, I think of absolutely everything. You know, if you pick up the phone, if you send an email, if you, whatever you're doing, what is the intention behind it? Yeah, you, I mean, being mindful about that, I think, you know, you as a mindfulness coach, as a mindset coach, um, uh, can really help people with that. It's something I actually struggle with, though. You know, sometimes I sort of, I'm just, I feel like I'm just running in the day, you know, without really stopping um, to set an intention for, for how I want to be. I mean, sometimes I get it right, but on the whole, it's actually quite a difficult thing to do. Yeah, because also it's, it's about standing, I think, in your fear. And mm. it's about becoming, as you say, mindful. And kind of, I think that would also tie into what we were talking about from the eating side. So when mm. you're eating, are you eating out of boredom? 
are you eating because there's an actual need that you're hungry? Like what, mm. what is the intention behind that? So with everything actually in this whole wellness series we're talking about is, is around the intention and mindfulness and response to fear. Mm, I actually wanted to ask you on that. How do you, how do you look fear in the face and, and, and move on from that? What's, what would be your advice to people? So for me, and I don't know if this is a good or a bad thing. I don't even like to label things, to be honest with you. I do have a tendency to be very spontaneous. So I will go straight for the fear, whatever that is, and I will stand in it and then deal with the consequences. The challenge with that is I don't think things through. So when it works in my favor, I'm like, ah, there we go. That's the power standing in it. And when it doesn't, I'm like, you should have actually thought the whole thing through because now look at your situation. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't, I, if I had to think about something for too long, I think it can be paralyzing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the real end point of, of, of fear, isn't it? Yeah. Not just fear with some information, that's fear with far too much information. Yeah. I mean, I know when we first started talking about the videos from the Converge and you said, you know, I'd be keen. And I thought, I am going to take that and I'm just going to run with that. I'm not going to give you even a day to think about it because if I leave it, you might actually just, you know, change your mind. And then you just, you just stood in it and you were like, absolutely. And you just said, yes. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think there was any thought. And I'm assuming from the previous conversations, if you thought about it, it could have actually stressed you out and made you fearful but you didn't, you just did it. You just said yes, and whoop, that was it, you did it. Well, I think such a good example because actually um, it would have been extremely anxiety provoking for me as an introvert to set something up and to um, have conversations and do it. But, but having a buddy to do it with has been an absolute joy. So, you know, in a way I get to lean on something that you're exceptionally good at, um, you know, leaping into the space and just making something happen. Um, so that's, so that's how, I, you know, and then that's my, you know, maybe my first step in, in dealing with some of the things that are uncomfortable for me. Um, yeah. Cause I think this year, I really, really, really believe maybe it's neuroplasticity. I do believe this year is going to be exceptional in every single way. And I do think stress can be very debilitating. So that's why we thought we would share these tips today. I hope they are helpful. We will be back again next week talking more about uh, wellness and well-being and have a wonderful week. Have a great week. Bye.